You're the, I think you asked a, a wonderful question of saying what what is all things? And I think that all things is defined by what how John what what does John want us to know what all things mean? Yeah, give and, me one second here. Give me one second here. So Mark, if you're you're with us now, can you hear us, Mark? I can. All right. So I'm gonna have you up here with also Jacob, if that's okay with you. Oh now it's laggy. Can you hear me okay, Mark? I can. Okay. So you're here. Great to have you, by the way. Look, look like that, man. You look like a tough, buff guy, but you can, you know, is that really you? Actually, that's my son. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you, Mark, for joining me. I took a moment there. Jacob is also here. He's actually a Latter-day Saint. So this is actually a fun thing for me. I've got a Latter-day Saint and a Jehovah's Witness up here. Um, and so this is great. So that's thank you daughter, for coming up, Mark. <laughs> so I see it. <laughs> no, no problem at all. Yeah. So um, I'll let Jacob finish your statement you were saying, then I'll, I'll, I'll then let you talk for a second, Mark. But go ahead, finish your statement, Jacob. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry if it's lagging. Um, it's not just a, a watchtower thing. I know you're just you're you're pointing out this whole thing about oh it's misinterpretation and some misreading, but I think that I mean again we're we have three people here coming from different backgrounds, not associated with watch. Uh, two of them not associated with watchtower, but we're coming with the same conclusion, which is um, we're trying to understand what john actually means when he says all things and i think that's important we can't just you know you can't just jump to a conclusion that all things just means in a very literal sense all things um it just it's very contradictory because again we we don't have enough um information on um uh, on just one verse in john you know there's not enough information there so we have to go to other sources to say okay what is, what does this mean and the, the, the scripture that Mark pointed out earlier was Genesis 1, 1, which is exactly what, you know, if you if you put the scriptures side by side, you can see easily that John was taking from Genesis 1, 1. And Genesis 1, 1 has nothing to do with angels. It doesn't talk about angels. It doesn't talk about, you know, what heaven looks like or the kingdoms. You know, it's talking about literally just the creation of the earth or the creation of the universe. You know, uh, this, you know, it doesn't even talk about so much like where, um, you know, the stars were created. It was in a very literal sense. It talks about, you know, how the, the waters came, how the, the land came. Um, so in a very, you know, if I, if I was a Jew, I would, my box wouldn't be that big. It would be just like, you know, earth um, and maybe just like the stars, like just the understanding of like, maybe the atmospheres and stuff like that. It wouldn't be like um, how we think of it today, which I think where you're going into like this, everything that ever existed and nothing, nothing before that, you know, cause, cause that, I think that you can get into a lot of problems if you think that way. And again, it's not just Mark saying this, it's not just uh, Sean saying this, it's, 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 it's this understanding that there is this, problem with the texts and how people are jumping to that conclusion. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So to catch some of you up speed here, um, let me just kind of bring back a little bit what's going on here with Mark, uh, sharing in the text, we were looking at John one, three, um, which was a lot of our text. And then I was asking lots of questions about the word, all things came into being through him and literally all things means all things. Um, even though what you just said, Jacob, I respect that in regards to what you're saying as a person, but I reject it because the Bible teaches otherwise. So we're looking here, all things came into being through Jesus. And as you were bringing up, Mark, talking about Colossians, because you believe Colossians talks about Jesus being created, I then went to Colossians 1, 16 and 17, sharing from the kingdom and a linear from jw.org which says, because in him it was created the all things in the heavens and upon earth, the things visible, the things invisible, whether thrones or lordships or governments, authorities, all things 
So this confirms once again, John 1, 3, backing it up. We're created uh, through him or in, into him. It has been created and he is before all things and the all things in him. It is stood together. And the comment that I was sharing with you, Mark, particularly, is the statement when um, the Watchtower, I know after they want to try to defend their belief, but in the Watchtower study edition of the New World Translation 2013 study notes of Colossians 1.16, it states all other things, because the word other has been inserted by the Watchtower, a literal rendering of the Greek text would be all things, and they say compare the kingdom in a linear, which I just showed you. It says, however, such a rendering could give the impression that Jesus was not created, but the creator himself. So the Watchtower is saying, because if you read it for what it literally says, it would give the impression that, in fact, Jesus is actually the creator, not created. So therefore, when they go on explaining the following statements, this is why they believe in their justification to alter the Bible, to add the word other four times in those two verses to justify their beliefs. So I'd like to give you the opportunity, Mark, now to give your thoughts on what I've shared. So basically, if we think about this, Kelly. Oh, just I'll talk a little you. louder. I can barely hear you. Can you hear me now? Oh, yes. Yeah, go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Okay. What's the gentleman also that we're talking to? He, his name is Jacob. Okay. He's a Latter-day Saint. Like he's, he's a Latter-day Saint. Yep. Okay. So just like Jacob pointed out, I mean, we can go to Mark 14, 36, and we notice it. I said in one of the comments that all things, it says with God, all things are possible. It's using the word all things. But we know in Hebrews 6, 18, it says it is, it is impossible. Or it says in Mark 14, 36, that is uh, with God, all things are possible. And in Hebrews 6, it says it's impossible for God to lie. Where in this case, did all things include lying? Did it include that God can die? Did it include that God can act unjustly? Did it include these things when it used this sweeping statement, all things? Well, of course not. And so what's the point? All things in the Bible usually has qualifiers to it. In other words, um, and it's usually implied. It's things that we ought to know. If we go to Colossians 1.15, like you said, 16, we use the word all things. Would this include the firstborn of all creation? No, it would not include the firstborn of all creation. He would not be included in the all things that was created through him. Because thinking in that way, it's going to run us into a lot of difficulties in terms of what we mean when we say the word, when we use this word, all things. Um, just like we go down to verse 18, when it says he's the firstborn, you may say, well, it doesn't mean literal firstborn. Actually, it does. It means literal firstborn. We're talking about creation. There's no qualifiers. If you go to if you go to Psalms 82, which a lot of people like to do, there's a qualifier there. It says he was placed as firstborn. And so we can't go to qualifying scriptures like that have qualifiers in it when we have a flat foot statement he's the firstborn of who god's creation he would not fall under the all things and so um i, I have an issue with that because when we go down and it uses the word all things we, we tend to think that it, how can he if all things are created through him how can he be a part of the all things if all things are created through him? It's talking about the creative. The, he's not, in other words, he's not involved in the all things. He's the firstborn of all creation. Yeah. And and if we go to Hebrew, I mean, the same state. Can, can I, to sorry. One. So I, I just want to go too far. Just kind of make a quick statement okay, to wrap good, it. Good, I want to respond good, to good, you. So, so just to finish up. And if firstborn doesn't mean in, in, in Colossians 1.15, then what does it mean in Colossians 1.18? Is right, he not right. the firstborn of uh, uh, from from the dead? Is that is that just a just a general statement that? But we know he is the firstborn from the dead. So, right. So, just to give a quick clarification here, this is the verse. Here. When you said Mark, were you referring to Mark ten? Mark fourteen thirty six. There is no Martin four, fourteen thirty six. That's that's not the right verse. You talking about in what the uh, New World Translation? Mark 14, 36 is what you're saying? Yes. 
Oh, okay. I thought you were reading a different one. Sorry. My apology. Okay. My, my bad. I was thinking of a different verse. So Mark 14, 36, he was saying, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup for me, yet not what I will, but you will. So yeah, all things are possible. But God's will here was that Jesus came to give his life, to die, and be resurrected. And so Jesus says, not my will, but your will. So, of course, we know all things are possible, but everything's also dependent upon its context. Correct. When, when we're looking at what is stated over here in Colossians, this is talking about creation. This is talking about everything. This is on the screen from the kingdom and a linear here. And Which is different. Do you agree that it's different? This is a different something going on here than we read in John 1 3. These are not the same. No, this, this is, is talking about the Yeah, that's where Genesis, that's this where Genesis completely comes the in same. handy right there. This no, this is Correct. completely the same. Because this we is talking about John, the things visible when, and in when we see in John 1 3, it literally says all things came into being through him. Apart from him, nothing came into being that is coming to me. This is clearly talking about creation. So you can I ask you a question, Kelly? Can that? I ask you a question? So let me ask you this question. If so, so you're telling me that you believe that John 1 1 is referring to when when, when this has been spoken, it's referring to all creation and you're saying this is going back to Genesis 1? No, that's not what I'm saying directly here in John 1 3. John 1, 3 is what I'm talking about right now. This is what John wrote pertaining to the word, which we would both agree to be Jesus, right? Correct. Okay. So here in 1, 3, when speaking about this, he says that all things, and I believe that means all things, came into being, meaning existence, through him, meaning Jesus, the word, and apart from him, meaning Jesus, nothing came into being, meaning existence, that is coming to mean. So if Jesus is a part of creation that you believe as a Jehovah's Witness, how can then he create himself if he's a part of creation? Well, that was my point that I was trying to ask you. So is John 1.1 1, 1, all the way up to John 1.3? OK, this is all consistent. This is all, we're continuously talking all the way through 1.3. Is this referring to Genesis 1.1? 1, 1? So when I shared earlier, I'm this, saying it's Genesis 1-1 no, talking understand. about John 1-1. One, one. I understand. When okay. I was sharing the slide, you may have missed it or maybe you heard. I, th I think you said you were listening. When you break down John 1-1, one, one, mm -hmm. there's three different clauses. Correct. And the first clause here, en arche en halagos, when you look up, and this is not people who are trying to write stuff against Jehovah's Witnesses or Unitarians. This is just looking at what the Greek grammar is teaching. This is stating that before the, the anarchy, in the beginning, ain, that word ain is the word it was. It has the meaning that before there ever was anything, the word has always been. That's what the impl implication of what John, the first clause is. So when it says in the beginning, this is pointing to the eternity of the word then when you look at the second clause well how are you yeah, doing this, that this, this, you just give me a second to finish okay, okay, I, I, okay I, sorry, yeah, sorry yeah, no worries ahead. i know you, i mean i know we both i can already tell by talking to you you like to talk and i appreciate that i really do i don't mean that any disrespect i just want to get my thought finished so kai ha lagos and proston that we would both agree in this text this is talking about the word was face to face with the father no doubt right Correct. Then we see the third clause, Kai Theos Ein Halagos, which even in the Kingdom of the Linear says God was the Word. So when we're looking at John 1, um, and we're looking at, oh, wrong one, there we go, sorry. Um, when we're looking at here, and you're asking the question about in the beginning was the Word, I don't believe this verse, in verse 1, this is directly pointing to Genesis 1 1 right here. I believe when we get to verse 3, this is where we see John pointing to now at the beginning of all things creation, because Genesis 1 says in the beginning, talking about the beginning of creation, God created all things, the heavens and the earth. But when John says here in the beginning, this is talking about the word in the prologue of his eternity being with 
the father. I see a distinction of how that's being used. So you don't believe. So are you saying that that in one three you don't you think that it was just Jehovah and and Jesus existing at that time? Is that what you're saying? Well, just to be cl a clarification, because I know this is our first time having a, a chat, and I hope we have more. How have, have you seen? I think you've left comments before. You've seen some of my videos, correct? Correct. Okay. So when I've shared some of my presentations, uh, I'm just going to put on screen just for a second here. Um, when I've shared some of my presentations about certain things, if you can see on the screen, the top far left, when it talks about one God is creator, I share Genesis 1.1. And then I share the part of it, uh, part of it, Isaiah 44.24. In the Old Testament, it says God is creator. Jehovah alone is creator. Even in Job 9.8, it says the same type of thing. Yet we see in the New Testament, Paul pointing to the Father in Romans 11.36, and you pointed to 1 Corinthians 8.6 earlier. We see Jesus in John 1.3, Colossians 1, Hebrews 1, and the Holy Spirit, even in Hebrew, or, um, Genesis 1.2, the Spirit was there from the very beginning in Job 33, 4 and Psalm 104 talks about that the Spirit of God has made me. So what I would say to you, Mark, what I believe in the very beginning of creation, of when things are being created, that the Father was there, the Son was there, and the Holy Spirit was there, and all three were involved in the creation of all things, and the Bible says Jehovah did it alone. Okay, so how did then, do, first of all, I would like to point out uh, 1 Corinthians 8, 6. To me, that explains it when it says he did it all alone because there's three categories. Most people think about it as two. You have the uncreated creator for us, but, but for us, there's but one God out of whom. That's where Jesus exists. He came out from God. And then it goes on to say, and through Jesus, you're, so what I'm saying is, is that I think that that is the scripture that clarifies when it says all things. It's in, excluding G Jesus is not part of the all things. He's not a part of the indirect creation. He's part of the direct creation out of God are all things. Remember, so first of all, all things are out of God first. Even though we go to John 1, 3, it says, this is all things were created through Jesus. But 1 Corinthians 8, 6 points out that out of God are all things. But would and you so agree, would, though, Mark, that would you agree, though, even in this text of what you're saying, Paul says here, from whom are all things we exist, one Lord Jesus, by whom are all things we exist. Paul points both that we exist for Jesus and the Father, and by whom things all come from both the Father and Son. He brings them both together in unity, yet, as I mentioned a moment ago, Isaiah 44, 24 says, Jehovah alone is the one who created all things. So wouldn't this actually be pointing to a triunity of God and not against it? I would agree with that if that was the only scripture that we had to go on. But once again, if we go to 1 Corinthians 8, 6, if it says God did these things all alone, out it says from out of God are all things. That's him doing it all alone. Jesus is not involved at this point. It says out of God are all things. I don't think I, I think I think you said something interesting, Mark, that I don't want to lose. I actually want to share what you just shared. Appreciation. Okay. Yeah. Based on Isaiah 44, 24, which is scripture, which is inspired, which is true, it says that Jehovah God alone is creator Correct. of all things. Let me just highlight this just briefly why we're here just for a moment and we'll come back. So, so, so as a sec, I, I've never really actually done this before. Can I actually push play on your video and still listen? Can, was that, would that disrupt? Because I can't see what you're pointing to. I just didn't know if that's possible. You can't. What are you looking at? Well, I'm saying if I go to, I'm, 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 I'm connected to you, but I'm not necessarily in YouTube. But I, if I go to YouTube, I have to push play. If I push play, would that disrupt our conversation? You can't, will be you a can't see the, the screen right now from Streamyard. Streamyard. I can, I no, I, I can see it. So I did it through, uh, I think uh, through Facebook. Oh, that's so I'm not sure if I'm not sure if I push play that this well run. okay that's so if you do go so if you are on YouTube you can just make sure you mute YouTube just mute okay. it that way there's not the double feedback and then just that's refresh what I was, it yes yes and yes, then you yes. and then you should be fine okay you should be fine my apology then 
Kelly, once you share your thought, can I share something or, or sure. ask something afterwards? Yeah, yeah. So tell me when you're able to see that on the screen, Mark. Let me see here. Let me push play. Okay, can you hear me? Pretty good. Not bad, not bad. So okay. you still can't see the screen, right? Yeah, that, that's what kicked me off. I'd rather not try that again. Okay. I need, I need to just, figure that out. All right, well, then just, op just open your Bible, um, and you can go to uh, Isaiah 48. Or sorry, 44, and um, we can look at it together here, and uh, I'll just read it for what it says, and then since if you're following along, I'll, I'll read also from the New World Translation to keep it on the same page here um, for this verse here. So Isaiah 44, 24 states, this is what Jehovah says your repurcher who formed you since you were in the womb i am jehovah who made everything i stretched out the heavens by myself i spread out the earth who was with me and what we see in scripture um another one over here uh spread out the earth all alone when you read literal translations what's going on is that the scripture states that it's god so as i was mentioning before to you when you're reading um john 1 as we were just looking at just a moment ago um the text that that even in the new world translation that i'm trying to emphasize here is that there is the indication that all things were created by jesus period that's that's exactly what it says when you're looking at Colossians, and even the Watchtower openly admits that there were others not there in the Greek, it's not in the kingdom in the linear, and they openly admit that by having the word other not there, it seems to give the impression that Jesus wasn't created. So the question that I've been trying to ask you here is, is that when we're looking at things in their proper context, why do you believe that when the scripture seems to be very clear that everything that was created, even 1 Corinthians 8, 6 that you were bringing up, Jesus is still even involved with that, with the Father, and the Bible says that it's God who did it. So that, that's what's a little bit confusing to me with, with how you're still trying to still have this view that Jesus is created when yet, Jesus being taught to be the creator. And if you're talking, Mark, we can't hear you. We still can't hear you. Can I add my thought? If, All right. While we, we're waiting for Mark, go ahead. If he's not going, can I, can I add my thought while he's getting All on? right. What's, what, what's your thought you'd like to add to this conversation, Jacob? Yeah. So, um, yeah, your question was basically, um, how could he be the creator of all things and be a creation itself? Right? Kelly, just to. Right. In other words, if Jesus created everything, according to John 1, 3, Colossians 1, 16, 17, Hebrews 1, 2. If he created everything, all things, how can he be created? Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, just real quick, Mark, uh, if it's all right. I don't know, can Mark. Can you guys hear me? Mark, just, just, yeah, can you guys hear me? We can now, Mark. Yes, thank okay. you. Okay. Okay. We'll, we'll come back to you in a second, Mark. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So go ahead, Jacob. Yeah, so... And and I think that that is yeah again important like you said yeah I'm I, it's a little bit it's a little bit laggy for me I'm sorry if I'm um yeah, you're, you're lagging for us too I can um, tell yeah uh, yeah so okay sorry about that um so essentially it, as far as the creation goes I mean again we're we're basing this off of 
like the creation as as the context as which the Jews would have understood it. Um, and again, that, I think that's that's what's very important with when reading these texts because we're look if we were to like if we were to understand what they were thinking when they heard the word creation. I mean, if you if you were to say creation, okay, um, to a Jew in twenty two thousand years ago, um, what would they what would they allude to? And again, we would we would say, oh, they would most likely allude to Genesis, right? Because that's that's where you find the story of the creation. That's what they're used to. Um, you know, that's basically their, you know, w within their scriptures as well. So they would they would hold this really in high regard. Um, so when you're saying that Jesus created, right? So we can say he created um, everything in Genesis one, which I think that's what John's point was, was that he was the creator in Genesis one, but he wasn't the only creator, right? And and that's kind of a Trinitarian point too, right? Like where you're saying, well, you know, there's multiple beings that helped with the creation um, in Genesis, but uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that you could help, you can help in the creation in Genesis one, but you don't have to be like the ultimate creator, you know? Because because you can you you had you could and and again it comes back to where uh, Sean's point right Sean's point was that um, just because you know the word God um, what what does that entail it, it it could entail a lot of things um, if we were to say yeah there's there's uh, multiple persons that helped with the creation that it's in a logical sense that 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 makes sense to us too you know because um, in Genesis one, we 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 know that the father can can like if you think of it as like an architect, he he the architect's the one who creates everything because in his mind he's he's developed this system. Now the the persons the people that he um, sends out to do the actual creation of like a building um, that also is a creator right because they're 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 using the architect's blueprint right and they're making something out of out of whatever the architect wants them to do so in a, in a similar fashion i would say you can be a creator in a like you know in a, in a sense but there is always going to be someone and and the very highest that's overseeing everything and so that's how i understand it Mark, Let me what, ask what you a question think? on what you, so you have the view then, Jacob, that Jesus at some point came into existence, was created. Is that correct? Jacob? I, I didn't get that. I'm sorry, you cut off a lot. So for yourself... For what you believe, as Larry's saying, do you believe that there was a point to which Jesus didn't exist and he came into existence, therefore at some point he was created? I, I'm still kind of getting, you're saying there was a point at, well, I'm, and then you cut off. Is there a time in the past when Jesus did not exist, and there was a time and place where Jesus did come into existence. Yeah, so we, we believe that Jesus was the literal son of God. So yes, the being a literal son, you have to have been, you have to have had a father who have brought, who had brought you into existence basically can you uh, explain in this can you spiritual sense can you explain how jesus was created how did he come into existence can i explain what how jesus what how did jesus come into existence you said he had a father how did jesus come into existence um, so I would say the same in the, in the same manner that light came into existence or, um, like the earth came into existence, how matter came into existence, um, that same fashion, 
is how Jesus came into existence. So he was organized, uh, organized through the Father. Isn't it correct that official LDS teachings teach that there is a heavenly father and a heavenly mother, and that's how all of us came into existence, like natural relationship? Isn't that the way Jesus was created? Well, relationship is definitely important, but I think you're trying to refer to, which I, I absolutely don't agree with, is that they had to have like some type of like divine sex or something like that. Um, that's not at all what I'm refer like what I would what I would suggest because um, the the matter at which things were created or came to being don't always have to come through uh, through sex, you know. Um, and and the the way I know that is, you know, uh, we do believe that, you know, Mary was a virgin. Um, we do believe that creation could happen through um, through other means. It doesn't have to come through what we understand it as. So according to prophets of the LDS Church and teachings of the LDS Church, they have actually taught, even in the gospel principles, that just like how we come into existence today through parents, that's how the pre-mortal existence of people before came into existence. So you're saying you don't agree with that? Are you not agreeing with your prophets and in, in, in your LDS teachings? Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's well understood. I think that it's kind of like a gray area where we're not like, and, and regardless, I mean, when, when people say, you know, because the creator can create without, you know, just, just like, again, I, I don't, need to have I, god doesn't need to have sex to create light you know um, I, 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 would you I would agree with you there i would agree with you there in the light thing i'm um, just saying like according just, to lds it's just a misconception yeah but a, well that may be on your part though from teachings from lds prophets and authorities they've actually taught that i, I don't that, think that you're i don't think that you're you understand their teaching i don't think you understand the teachings as well because so again, that's it's so you're you, you you're would, reading you into say, like you would say that, people that, like Brigham the same Young fashion that we're created. Yeah, so you're saying people like Brigham Young and and, and Bruce McConkey. I think it's just the people are apostles and prophets. They were wrong. And I, I'm sure a lot of people agree with me. Hey Kelly, Please? can I can I can I say what I think? Sorry, just give me one happen. second, Mark. I want to finish this because okay, okay, I'm sorry. I know I know Jacob doesn't maybe agree with this, but this is what LDS people have taught. This is teachings from your prophet. So. If you don't agree with it, I can respect that. But I'm telling you that this is a teaching from LDS prophets and authorities in the past. Are you at least willing to acknowledge that, Jacob? Well, I'm I'm willing to acknowledge that it's a misunderstanding um, of the teaching. So when they um, say, if, we to look if at I the said actual you, text I came into over, existence, we would never, through, we wouldn't see. Yeah, we wouldn't. If I see said to you, I came into existence. If I came into existence the same way you did through your parents, what would that mean? So you didn't come into existence. You came into existence before um, you were your parents. That's what we believe. Latter-day Saints believe in a pre-mortal existence. I came into so existence before my parents. My parents are when before you, when me. When you friend. say came into existence. <laughs> when we're talking here physically well, in the world. That's the LDS belief. I can't be in existence before my parents, man. That doesn't make any sense. What I'm trying to say is when we see LDS teachings, when they're writing these things, I'm not, I don't have the stuff in front of me, so I can't give you word for word, but just like how we come yeah. into existence today through our parents is how the pre-mortal children and the pre-existence came to existence. And that's what they teach about Jesus and Lucifer. So that implies procreation. There's there's no other way around that. So I, I di and that's where I disagree because I think and uh, if you're to re if you're to bring up the text, I I, I it applies to sub to people who don't understand LDS theology. I agree. 
So you you can you can formulate that. I mean, some Muslims still believe that you know Mary wasn't a virgin. Or no, no, sorry, no, I should, I should that was a, that was a lie. They knew they think that that Christ, they that Christians believe that uh, that God had to have. Uh, you know, sex with Mary or something like that. So there's a, it's, or maybe Jews believe that, but it doesn't mean just because they think that it implies that um, doesn't mean it's true, you know, because they don't understand actual Christian theology. Yeah. I'm not sure what you just said there. That was, I don't think you, you stumbled all over the place. Because they use the word begotten yeah. son and, and John, yeah. in John three, six, they, we use the word begotten son. Yeah. You, you and I, I want to probably encourage you to stop. You're, you're really not representing the Muslims accurately. Muslims believe in the virgin birth of Jesus. They believe that Jesus was born of a virgin. They would agree with that. What they would say is right. they don't, they, they, they don't reject, believe that Christians, they don't they believe reject, that Christians. They reject Jesus being the son has nothing right. to do. What, right. what Which the means, Jewish people, what it means. I'm trying to help you, Jacob. The Jewish people rejected Jesus' virgin birth. The people who were the people against him in the early first few centuries, they actually said in their different targums that Jesus was born of fornication. They rejected the virgin birth. So I think you're trying to you're mixing some things up. But let's get to Mark here. Mark, you've been patient. Let's bring you back up. Yes. So I, I would think that you know the answer to your question is First uh, Corinthians eight six. Uh, Colossians 1.15 and Revelation 3.14. That's how we know that Jesus was created. Now, what I was trying, and, and you can respond to that in a little bit. What I'm trying to identify is when you say John 1.1 1, 1, is referring to Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, who was there at Genesis 1.1? 1, 1? That's what I'm trying to get from you. Well, when we're reading Genesis 1, I'll put it on the screen, even though you can't see it, but you can look it up obviously um when we're looking at genesis 1 1 and it says over here um in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth now the whole chapter from verse 1 all the way down to the end of the chapter is about god and his creation goes all the way to the end. It even says at verse 31, God saw all that he had made. Behold, it was very good. There was evening and morning, the sixth day. So the whole context here of Genesis 1 is God is the one who created all things. When we see verse 26, though, we see something that's very interesting that takes place that's unique in the Genesis account. God said, let us make man in our image, in 126, even in your New World Translation. Correct. So here, the whole context that we see from verse 1 to the end of chapter 1 is God's involved in creation. We see something unique take place in verse 26, though, where it, comes, it goes from singular to plural. Now, if you're Moses, I'm sure when he wrote this, this must have been something a little bit perplexing to him. Right, but he still wrote it. What we see here is something of a unity already being revealed. Now, if we only had Genesis 1, we wouldn't get the Father, we wouldn't get the Son, we wouldn't get the Holy Spirit, we wouldn't get a lot of information that we read, of course, later, of course, right, and throughout the whole Bible. But what this does do when it's talking about creation, about man specifically, this does give us an indication as we read other scriptures with the Father with jesus and the holy spirit they would have been the us that would have been there in the beginning in genesis 1. so is that all this there in genesis 1 1 when we think about genesis 1 1 are we just talking about those three there is that what you're saying that's a yes or no is that what you're saying can you clarify that a little bit more I'm so not so when it says in the beginning in relationship to john 1 1 in the beginning was the word Yep. Okay, so we go back to Genesis 1. Yep. Are we talking about the same thing? What, in other words, because you use Genesis 1-1, it says Jesus goes back to all eternity. 
And you're saying that this is how we know that Jesus is with the Father through all eternity. And then you go back to Genesis 1 1. Is are we is that what we're talking about? That that the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit was the only ones there when we read Genesis 1 1, when we read John 1 1, that's what we're dealing with. Is that what we're talking about? So clarification. So when we're looking at John 1. And I know you can't see it, but that this is on my my slide. Actually, I, can, I, can, I can now. I can. Oh, oh you can. can. Okay. Well, that's yes. nice. Okay, okay. Good. Good. Yeah. Good. So, what I was mentioning earlier, this is just John one one. Mm -hmm. This is talking about when 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 examined, and I and I encourage you to check it out. This is talking about from eternity that the Word was always with the Father. When we're looking at Genesis one. This is talking about in the beginning, God created. This is talking about the beginning of creation. Now, your question was, who is there? Was there anybody else with God? Now, I believe that there could be angels who are with God, right? In regards to with some of this that was going to be taking place early on. But Jehovah it says God alone is the creator of all things, right? That's the distinction here. And but what I think we you're tap dancing now. No. How am I tap dancing? Well, because I'm asking a clear cut question. Genesis 1 1, we all know is referring to, I mean, uh -huh. I'm sorry, John 1 1, we know is referring to Genesis 1 1. And you're using John 1 1 to say that this shows that Jesus goes back to all eternity. And we know that this is referring to John 1 1. Uh huh. So how are you making that leap when we know this 1 1 is referring to Genesis 1? Well, let me ask you a question. In Genesis 1, where do we see angels being created? Well, no, well I'm trying to get your no, position. Help, no, help me out. That, I'm going to help question. you out. But, Hold but on that now. Is, Hold that on. is the question. Hold on. Talk, see, talk see. about tap dancing. Hold on. Let me ask you a question. In Genesis 1, all it says here, in the beginning, God created in the earth. That's a statement by itself. Correct. Then verses 2 through the rest of the chapter, Moses gives us what took place when the beginning of creation was taking place. So before we would say, before anything was ever created, Jehovah was alone. But my question to you is, where was the creation of angels ever specifically stated in scripture? I, 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 don't, I don't have a problem with that question, but I gotta, I gotta get- Can you answer it though? It. Oh, absolutely. But I gotta nail you down first. Okay, or what's the reference saying, though? No, no, hold on, hold on. Are you saying? This is what I got to get from you, Kelly. <laughs> you and, and, and you've you've somewhat said it, but I need you to say it. Okay, try or, again. It, it, it is John one one. You use that to say, and I get it. Before creation, Jesus was with Jehovah. Correct. Of course, the word, the word, the word right? The word was with God. Of course, okay. Jesus was with the Father from the very beginning. Absolutely. Okay, okay. in that scripture is referring back to genesis one correct no no yes it oh God. no was re yeah we all you, know this. Are, are you not listening to the greek this is the greek this is what the greek construction is when the greek first clause is saying in the beginning was the word that word was is the greek word ain has correct. the meaning that there was never a time the word was not it's pointing to that the word was from all eternity. The second clause says that the word was with God, well, meaning the Father. The word was with the Father from the very beginning. It says in verse 2, he was with God in the beginning. Then we see creation that, start in verse 3. So there's a distinction of in the beginning there. So what, what, so, so what beginning are we talking about? Because like my, my fellow... In the beginning, meaning from eternity past, the word has always been. That's so what John, John is communicating. So John 1, 1 is not talking about Genesis 1. Not in that direct verse. No, but we see that in verse 3. So verse 3 is talking about 1. It's talking about the beginning of creation. So, so okay, so. Yeah, it's it, very it, convenient it, for, it, for it, two it, verses yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. called. So, it's so called here's, here's my point. Look at it. It's right on the screen, no. guys. Look so at here, it. Here's, here's my look, question. Look, look, look. Let me yeah. talk for a second. Let me talk for go a second. Ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. In the beginning was the word. So John is emphasizing that the word has always been. That's what the Greek tense is stating here about the word ain was. The word was with God, meaning the word was with the Father from eternity. 
And Jesus, who is the Word, is also identified as being God by nature. That's what the Greek is teaching. But Kelly, he, I'm still talking, temporal. sorry. He was in the beginning with God, me and the Father. Then we see here in verse 3, this is pointing to now Genesis 1, 1, the beginning of creation. This is the importance of reading things in their context. Gentlemen, please, this is when we got to let the verses speak for themselves and go with it. Don't make a verse say something it doesn't say. But in the beginning is temporal. That's the whole point. You're using a temporal statement. That's literally says claim. in the beginning in Genesis. Yes. 10. Yes. Gentlemen, You're please. Using the temporal statement. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'll be very, I'm not a fluent Greek person, but I've studied for years. I'm not a source like someone like Daniel Wallace or Mounts or some other guys out there that got some great credentials. But I would encourage you to take some time to look into this a little bit more about the word in the beginning was the word. This is talking about. From the very beginning of, of all things, the word has always been. That's the indication here. And Kelly, I've looked into this and I'm saying to you and I'm asking you, how do you what, take what have you looked at, Mark? What have I, you looked I, at? No, no, for me to sit back, listen, I, I'm a believer that I don't have you looked at other stuff that's not Jehovah Witnesses sources that abs, abs, I've been all, by it? All, all the time. That's why I'm on your what have you looked your, at? Absolutely. What have you I, looked at? For, for me personally, I've looked at the Greek. Okay, what, which Greek, which scholar though? Not not your Kingdom and Linear, well, not the New World Translation, not the Watchtower. What Greek? Greek Thayer's, Strong's. Okay, so you haven't actually taken the time to look at what scholarship has to say about this verse. Well, you just because, looked at what you think. Well, because a lot of the scholars out there are Trinitarians, so a lot of what I could say think, the same thing about you with your New World Translation. We could both be biased, and we don't read anything at all. Well, well, that's true, Kelly. But at the same time, you have to ask yourself. We're using a temporal word and saying that yeah. this has that this means eternity past. When we know, we all know, and I think you know. So what? What is the word? One. What is the word? Was there? Yeah, again, was, Kelly. I'm not Jehovah's Witness. I'm not Jehovah's Witness, and I agree with Mark right here. You know, well, it doesn't do. have to be just. Because you believe one, Jesus came to existence. Of course bias. you do. Of course you do, Jacob. Of course you would. I, I, I have. That's why you're both on here. Of course, if you did, you wouldn't be up here. If you didn't, you wouldn't be up here, gentlemen. Of course you do. And but here's the, the point. It's not biased if I'm different. If I if I believe the same thing, Mark, because well, we're different. Jacob, we have different you're being beliefs. honest. LDS actually teaches that there was a time and a place where Jesus actually was procreated. So if you want to be legit, you don't believe the same thing as Mark here, okay? So this is what the text says. In the beginning was the word. What I'm trying to share with you, it says the word was. It's the Greek word ain. And when you look it up in its tense, Mark, I'm trying to share with you, this is talking about that there was never a time the word didn't exist. So before creation, the word already existed. Where, where are you getting it from, from that statement? From That's that from Greek statement. scholarship. I, I understand aim, and I understand that. But That's from you, Greek scholarship. Well, I understand what you're saying, that you're saying that. So all those but, Greek scholars that I could probably list about five people, they're all wrong, and these are Greek scholars? Well, here's what we have to do. We have to think about it like this. The Bibles were translated and they used the word in beginning. Okay. If they meant all eternity, they would have said in the in the in all eternity was the word. They know that that's not let's, what's being said. That's a belief let's system. Let's take a time out, gentlemen, for a second. Cuz all three of us are sharing something a little bit different here, okay? And I want to respect you guys. Let's think about this for a second. Let's go back to John 1. Go ahead. Let's go back to John 1. Is there anything that was ever created that came into existence, that ever came into existence without Jesus? Yes or no? Yes. What's that? Jesus. Is that what John 1, 3 teaches? No, that's what 1 Corinthians 8, 6 teaches, and that's what Je no, Revelation no. 3, 4 I'm asking teaches. you from John 1, 3, what John my, wrote. My answer to that is the Father, by the way. Okay. And and where and where did the father come from, Jacob? Um, the, uh, it's not given to us, but I can tell you that Jesus is. And, and didn't and didn't the father have a father? Yeah, that's irrelevant. Yeah, matter. and his father had a father, and, and his father had matter. a father. Again, you're you're you're, you're trying you're father. trying so, you're trying to derail so, the actual so, conversation. But I mean, here's the point though: is the, the the God that you say you believe in is not really eternal. At some point, they had to come into existence. And how did they come into existence? It's never explained. The father, the father is eternal. 
I know. Kelly, I, I define the word there. God differently than you. I agree with you there. You know, it's funny is that even the Book and of I, Mormon and, and I agree. God's always been eternal, but yet LDS don't teach that. So, so why is this, Kelly? Okay, why is it that we both, we all are reading the same language in the beginning? And it has to be the beginning of what? You, we're ignoring what do we mean by beginning. You're saying let, the, 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 the statement let's in give the you, beginning let's literally give you the benefit means. Of the doubt. I'll agree for a second here. Okay. Let's say this. I do. Uh, so let me be clear. I'm not saying this is not pointing to Genesis 1. I'm saying what the clause is saying in the first clause when it's talking about here that the word already existed before creation. That's my whole point that I've been trying to share. That's what I've been trying to share. Is John pointing to Genesis 1? Of course. I've, if, if you didn't think I was saying that, then maybe I didn't word it correctly. But my point of the first clause was that before there ever was any creation, what John is emphasizing, the word Jesus already was. But the so, angels was there. Okay. Here's what I want to ask, though. This this is the thing. You Both, both of you gentlemen have different views. But you're both also disagreeing with what John says. No, John a, 1 3 wait. says all things. What are all things? In this context, it means all things excluding him. Doesn't say that. This says all things. You remember in 1 Corinthians 15 28 when it says that God says that all things were put under Jesus' feet? But it says, but this does not mean the one who put all things under him. It's okay. obvious. We can get there in a there second. Certain things, okay. There are certain we things can that get are there obvious. In a second. But this is what John says. This is what John says here. When you read Colossians 1, 16 and 17 properly with the word other not being there, because that's adding and changing the context. When you read what Paul wrote, what you read here, all things came into existence by Jesus, through from this Jesus. Sing, from so, this singular context, but, if you want to say all things from this only scripture, this singular scripture, yes, one would walk away thinking that all things. That's if you just use this one scripture. Right, That's my right. point. And we shouldn't would, do would that. Say, and we shouldn't do that. Would you say so? Let's 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 get a little bit deeper to this debate. The reason why you don't believe Mark and also. You've alluded to it, I think, Jacob, is because Jesus is called the firstborn, and firstborn must imply that he was at some point created. Would that be agreeable by both of you? No, not ne for me, not necessarily, because I know John 1 1 is referring to uh, Genesis. No. No. So let's play Colossians 1. You believe firstborn means Jesus was first to be created, yes? Absolutely. Same thing with you, Jacob? Um, most likely, yeah. Okay. What would be a difference there with you, Jacob? Just to be clear, so I don't want to—I don't want to assume. What do you mean? I, I'm saying that, um, like, again, we don't have all the context. We don't have all the things. It's just we're, I, I'm coming to coming to this as um, as. So what? Do, so in so in Colossians one fifteen, when it says there on the screen, if you can see it, mm -hmm. Jesus is said to be the firstborn of all creation. What does that mean to you, as Larry Saint? <clears throat> Okay, so Jesus is the image of the invisible God, so he is the image of God, um, which is, in this context, the Father, right? The first form of all creation. Okay. Um, so, uh, yes, I mean, uh, what in the, in the context that, you're, that I'm referring to is more of like um, the firstborn of the Father. So the, 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 the Father's only begotten Son, too, so. So how is Jesus the firstborn though? What what is it? What is this teaching here? He's the firstborn. What does that mean here? What do you think? So it could be a lot of things. It could be again, like it could be that he's the like because it uses the word only begotten son. And I would say that uh it is the the his his the father's son that was begotten in the flesh, uh meaning that he was he was uh basically called called to receive a mortal body um and so it, it, i think it I, I think it can allude to that um in a spiritual sense yeah i think that the first ever like our eldest brother is jesus christ or jehovah and so at some point again just to reemphasize here in regards to the first 
born eldest, would that be implying the first to be begotten, meaning to come into existence? I won't go the other direction, just talking about the first born. Would that be implying him to be the first to be begotten in the family tree? Uh, I'm kind of, kind of lost, kind of lost on that question. Um, I'm just well, saying I'm that I'm trying it, to avoid there, going down the of... same same thing as about the procreation. I'm trying to avoid that for your sake right now. What I'm trying to say is, if you're calling him the firstborn, the eldest, you just said the eldest, so that's talking about lineage. So is he the firstborn of the lineage? Therefore, the first one to come into existence. The first. So and what what your your the. Definition of existence is different for you and me, but that, that's just all I say about it. Um, but yeah, so, so according so, in our in our in our uh, context again, uh, I would just say that that Jesus, the firstborn of uh, what the creation again refers to um, Genesis one. That's all I'll say. So he's the firstborn of Genesis one. What does that mean, Jacob? I need to be clear on what you're saying. I don't want to misread you. So let's, if you want to pull up Genesis 1, and I'll, I'll show, um, you know, all, all of this thing. But basically, yeah, so um, basically, what, what, basically what you're saying is, is yeah. So Jesus is so, the firstborn of, of Genesis 1. What does that mean? Yeah, so, well, what I mean is that the, the word creation is referring to Genesis 1. So when we're talking about creation, um, the firstborn of creation, um, maybe we could say, then God said, let there be light, and there was light. Um, again, I, I, I find that very, uh, uh, that, that's a huge illusion to me of Jesus Christ. Um, and God said, you mean the actual words that come out of God's mouth caused it to be. So I would say Jesus Christ is um basically within that within that context so just to be clear so verse three says then god said let there be light and there was light are you saying that there was at one point there was no light and there was light and you're saying this light is jesus well i that's a good question actually just in in general um i mean the fact that the fact that god has to bring out light was there light before this and i would say there had to have been or, or else god wouldn't exist but here is kind of you you can actually say it's a, more of a contradiction because then uh how can there be how can god bring out light that wasn't there but should have been there um so, so this, i'm trying this, to understand to it back this, to the word firstborn though the you you you've implied firstborn doesn't necessarily mean free first to be created by the father so you're having this view now the firstborn of creation points back to genesis you've now went to genesis 1 3 it seemed to be that the light was supposed to be Jesus that came into existence. I'm confused by what you're trying to say now, Genesis, Jacob. Can you try again? Yeah, yeah. So actually, that's really good. Uh, you, you just said it, I think, where I, I believe that when Jesus said, when God said, so the Father, this in this text context, the Father said, let there be light. That was an allusion to Jesus Christ. There so was this light. would be where he came into existence? Yes. And then also, uh, when God saw that there was light, it was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. Um, I, I assume, I allude that to the uh, separation of Lucifer from, from uh, heaven. Okay, so, so to be clear sense. what you said, just to be clear, I want to make sure I don't misunderstand you. So Genesis 1-3, when it says, God said, let there be light, you're believing this is alluding to Jesus coming to existence. Mm-hmm. And this is also then talking about how he's the light. And so prior to this, prior to Genesis 1, 3, from what you just said, from your view, you don't believe Jesus would have been in existence prior to this. Yeah, so this, this and, and the word creation is the key word in that, in that verse, uh, what you're talking, the, the previous verse you that we were on. Because you have to take into the context where what to to what whom am i speaking to so if i'm speaking to jews and my and i use the word creation again i have to i have to bring it back to somewhere and this is the, this is where i would bring it back to so and, and that's okay. what john was alluding to so we got in your view would you say this is your unique view or would this be something you think might other lds might believe just asking 
Well, I mean, obviously, there it's just a, an illusion, right? So it's not like me, meaning that you can bring the. That's the beautiful thing about the Bible is that you can bring, uh, you know, these type of things together. Um, but but just to because I'm trying to um, help you understand where I'm coming from, you know, um, you know, other people might Latter Day Saints might not, you know, see that illusion. They right. might just see it at, like just a physical. Uh, superficial type of way of seeing it but the way i see it and the way i think the jews you know because they're very poetical um you know may have referred to it with uh with john i think that that that's definitely a good conclusion um of course this is talking about the earth and everything um but i i can't you know there's a lot of things that are you know like for example like the the, the surface of the waters what does the waters mean you know, mm -hmm. in this context. So prior a lot to of verse three, just to make sure I understand your statement from where you're coming from, mm -hmm. God said, let there be light. So prior to this, Jesus wasn't in existence just yet. Just to be clear one more time from what you're saying, right? Well, yeah, that's the understanding. That's okay, in the fair beginning, enough. God created. I got you. Yeah. So when we're back over here in Colossians 1, Paul says, just after the thing about the firstborn of creation, Paul says this about Jesus. For by him all things are created, in the heavens and on earth, visible and invisible. Paul says all things, heavens and earth. So Jesus was involved with the creation of heaven and earth, which is Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. So Jesus must have existed before verse three. Well, I yeah, I mean, verse three, it's not chronological. Genesis is not a chronological book. I mean, you could have th three could have been uh, could have happened before verse one. Um, you know, you it's think not, so? The chapter chapter three could have been before verse one. There's two accounts in Genesis. So you, we don't there's not a perfect. chronology. You don't think that there's actually order. In Genesis one, was going by day by day by day. You think that there's, there's order in a, in a certain spot, but you don't. Again, there's it, you, it, it, there's blocks of information that those blocks could be happened before or after the the next verses. It's not all the verses. Wow, you know um, that's uh, that's something. I mean, okay. it's it, that's that's just a that's just a scholarly that's, point of that, view. Like too. that's not a scholarly point of view, but that's your yeah. Because look at look at Genesis one and two. <laughs> and see what what happened no, actually happened no. first. No, I'm talking about what but you just said here. Pretty in Jesus, definitely not. Okay, so I'm going to get back to the issue of the firstborn over here. Appreciate what's going on. Interesting thoughts. So you both definitely have very different views pertaining to firstborn, and I'm excited about this. This is good. This is a very interesting conversation. So as what Jacob has just shared pertaining to Jesus being the firstborn points back to Genesis 1, 3 coming into existence. That's what Jacob has shared. That's his view. Mark, you've shared this is believe that you believe this is where Jesus is actually being first to be created by the father. And then through that in the new world translation, why they believe that that's why the word other is there. Um, let me ask the question here to mark right now for a second because this might be a little bit more pertaining to mark on this question here are there any verses in the bible that have the word firstborn that does not mean first to be in a lineage first to be something that to be made are there any verses that you can think of where the word firstborn is used that can give a different type of context mark well can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, so in the Old Testament, there's 132 times the firstborn is used. In the okay. New Testament, there's eight times in which is is used. In the Old Testament, we do have cases where firstborn is used spiritually or a little bit differently, uh, and that is in uh, Exodus chapter four, uh, uh, Psalms 89, and I believe. Jeremiah 31. I can't be sure on Jeremiah, but yep, Jeremiah 31.9. You're right. You're is right. Is that it? Okay. Yep. So I think those are the three cases that we see a variance in where firstborn doesn't mean a literal firstborn. And I would also like to point out 
Well, go ahead. I'll, I'll, you asking the question. Go no, that's, well, that's that's fine. Like, so you're already kind of a, a little bit of a kind of have an idea at least about what this was going to be shared because Exodus four twenty two, you're right. Jeremiah thirty one nine, um, Psalm eighty nine verse twenty seven pointing to David being. Well, I think uh, I said eighty two. You're correct. Yeah. Eighty nine. Yeah. 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 Um, where King David is called God's firstborn, and it's reference to his being a uh, king, having the preeminence over other kings. You left something out there. I did? Yeah. D David is placed as God's first. It was placed as firstborn. Not that he was the, he, he was firstborn, even though we know he was not. He was like eighth, I believe. It says he was placed as the firstborn. Place, that's, that, huh? that's the, yeah, that's crucial. That's crucial because that's a that's a qualifier. So I'm curious here. So here it says Psalm 89, 26, 27. Yeah, I will yeah, make him my firstborn. 26, the highest. So this is Psalm 89, verse 27. I will make him my firstborn, the highest of the kings of the earth. So here, David is being identified as God's being called firstborn. The point is that I was sharing is that we know and you know that David was the youngest. He had seven older brothers. My point was I was trying to get from the start was the issue of the word firstborn. When we see in scripture, there are examples which you have at least openly admitted to, which I'm, I'm impressed. Um, how the word can be used for sure. Uh, for example, as I was had on the screen a second ago, is Israel. Israel is called God's firstborn, my son. So Israel, the people of Israel, called God's firstborn, but we know that they weren't like created or it has nothing to do with lineage. It had to do with them as a people being chosen by God to be represented of him. So the reason why I bring this up is even in Colossians that was being talked about a moment ago. In Colossians 1, you talked about this a little while ago, verse 18. That's interesting. Jesus is called here as well. He is also the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. Now, he wasn't the first one to be raised from the dead. You know that, right? Mark? If you're still there, you know that Jesus raised people during his ministry. And can, can, uh, you, can, can you hear me? Yeah, I can now. You're back. There you go. So, so what I'm saying is you, you kind of just skirted by something here. And so I'm, I'm not sure about the skirting I, part here. I, I, I don't like your accusation. My point is I brought well, up. I don't mean that. I brought I mean up. That no, that's fine. I brought up Psalm 89 where it talks about King David being made firstborn. He's being Reverse declared to be firstborn. So Maybe. we agree. I'm just saying we agree that the word firstborn does not automatically mean no, there's a something in lineage or to be created. Do you agree? No, no, because there's a qualifier here. And what that mean by that in verse 27, he was made firstborn. You cannot use that in relationship to Colossians where there is no qualifier. There's no so, qualifier in, in, in Colossians. There is a qualifier that basically tells us what firstborn means we don't have a qualifier in, in so Colossians. if it 1 says he was made to be the firstborn yes and jesus and, is made to be the firstborn how does that work because there's because there's a qualifier in 89 27 you can't You're use right. a scripture that has a qualifier so why, so why is paul or sorry why is king david called the firstborn why because jehovah was using him to 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 execute his his foregoing what he wanted to take place in the future he right. he, he he chose david right david was a choice even though he was eighth in line uh -huh. he chose david to be that my point is and let me no, you're something. actually on to something good mark just to be very clear so yes. the reason why he's called firstborn is because it says he was the highest of the kings of the earth so it had something to do with authority or something to do with rank. Would you agree? Yes, but here's the point. That's the I'm just qualifier. asking you agree. You, you agree, right? Yeah, that's the qualifier. Okay, so let's go to Colossians 1. Let's look at it again. But can, so, I, finish, can I finish what I'm saying before you, we move that so you can understand clearly where I'm coming from? 
I'm pretty sure I do, but go ahead. Okay, so what I'm saying is, I understand that, because I've, I've had this argument before, I understand this argument. My point is that I'm, what I'm saying is, is that if you use a scripture that has nothing to do with connective tissue to do with what we read in Colossians chapter 1, verse 15, but okay, that's fine, let's use it, even though there's no connective tissue. Oh, there's what a I'm, lot of tissue. There's a whole well, lot of well, tissue. I, I, I understand the tissue, but there's it doesn't. A lot. There, there's, there's gouges of the tissue, my friend. Okay, okay, so, but my, po so let's my go point there. is. So we, so we agree on Psalm 89. Can, can yeah. I finish the statement? So but what do I'm we agree is, on Psalm 89, yes or no? 89 in the sense that God qualified him. He's qualified to be, to be called born. his firstborn. Why? Correct. Because he's the highest of the kings of the earth in order of rank. No, 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 no. Because once he qualified him, he became the highest. He became qualified, made. It doesn't matter. He's called yes, firstborn, not because of lineage, not because of birth. Cor not So that's the whole point. Firstborn has to do with authority and rank. But, but, but. There's no but. It, no, there is a that's but. That's it. No, I get that you're saying that's it, but but if, yeah, if you be, be patient, it even be said here. the highest of the kings of the earth, it gives you the context right there, Mark. Be, be, be patient, be patient a little bit. I, I I get that this is you know. I want to so, get back to your argument in Colossians one because this I definitely you're, get back you're, there. you're refuting yourself in Psalm eighty nine. You you've done a good job. You're done. <laughs> no, but let me let me just make this final statement. And then and then it, Ke you know, Kelly, I, give I, the guy a break. I, <laughs> Yeah, I, I respect your platform. He's Listen, a not, talker I'm, like me, Jacob. I'm not, He's I'm out not, in the I'm not, field doing exactly what I do. So yeah, you've I'm had your shot, Jacob. Be quiet. So, so, so please, I'm not disrespecting you. This is not what's going on. No, here. I know. Oh, actually, I don't. Okay. I don't believe you were disrespecting me. I just want to get back to your thrust of I, Colossians I know, but, one because this doesn't but, prove your case at all. But but this has to be hammered home. Why? That, this this refutes be, you. Well, the longer well, you no, talk on this, no. it hurts you. No, well, let let it hurt me then. Let it hurt me. All so right, the pain's coming. You got it. So what I'm saying is, is that you're using a scripture where God clearly is qualifying him as firstborn. Qualify him. That's a crucial component. What I'm saying is, is that you're now taking that qualifier and you're trying to apply it to Colossians where there is no qualifier. Okay, the, the so we agree the qualifier for David is God chose to use him in a special way, qualified him as a king of the highest of the kings of the earth. Yes or no? Yes. Okay, good. All right, back to Colossians. Okay, so here in Colossians 1, Jesus is called the firstborn from the dead. Was there anybody raised from the dead before Jesus? Different. A a at Was anybody raised from Lazar the dead Lazar before Lazar Jesus? Lazarus. Yep, wasn't the 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 servant's daughter Tabitha? Well, you, can go, you can go there too. Yeah, Lazarus and yep. her. So so he can't be the firstborn, meaning the first one to be raised from the dead. Yes, not not true. Because in this case, in Colossians one eighteen, it's talking about being. Remember when Jesus said, "Let the dead go bury their dead." We're all in a death like state. We're all dying from birth. When okay. Jesus' resurrection was a totally different kind of resurrection, he does That's not. That's actually agree. This is different. This is different. Not, this is not normal. Not You're right. This is a totally different kind of a resurrection. Yep, you got, we're, not, we're on the same page there, Mark. Way to go. So, 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 no. Though, though, those comparisons would not be the same. We're talking so about first a different born kind of here does not necessarily imply he was the first one to be raised directly from the dead. It have a different meaning, correct? No, what I'm saying is firstborn. Then, here. then, the, then you're refuting yourself because there's other people no, raised no, from the dead. No, because we got we we can't get out of sight of the context. The whole context of what <laughs> Jesus. No, no, the whole context of what Jesus is talking. Because remember, Jesus made the statement. The yeah. whole context, and we know in in First Corinthians, we know in all these different things. First Corinthians 15 is talking about the resurrection to life in okay. heaven. That's so why this is Jesus talking said, about right, something different. Earth rebirth so there's this a rebirth here there's actually born now lazarus wasn't born he was he wasn't reborn you, you think jesus had a rebirth raised from the dead whoa that's Absolutely. horrible it's a rebirth okay. from the dead okay so, so, so Kelly, that's let me what finish, baptism let me is all about by the way let me finish what's that? Kelly. what's that let me let me finish kelly what i'm saying is is that you know i know you know is that that that, that lazarus 
Jesus' resurrection was different. He died again. That's what I've been telling you the whole time, Mark. I'm not he, disagreeing he, with you. No, no. What I'm saying, he's di he died again. Jesus of course. was talking about a resurrection to life. Uh -huh. You don't die again. Uh -huh. That's why he said it was the So there's first a qualifier here, like you like to use. Correct. The qualifier is different. We're on the, the same page, Mark. The We're on the same the page. The so qualifier first is, to is qualified by the context, meaning of Jesus, because it was something special about his resurrection from the dead. Say it again. There's a qualifier. I'm going to use your fun word now. The reason why he's being called the firstborn from the dead is not that he was the first to be raised from the dead because there were others who were first, but there's a qualifier. He's the firstborn from the dead because he was the first to be resurrected, glorified. And therefore, it says he has the first place in everything. The qualifier is talking about his special rank being raised from the dead, the first to be glorified. What I would like to point out is that Jesus is talking about a totally different kind of resurrection. It's not even talking Paul. about that this at all. Paul, not Jesus. I mean, I'm, so, I'm sorry, Paul. That's okay. Paul was talking about a different kind of resurrection. Uh -huh. He was talking about a resurrection to life. The two are so not first the same. One, what I'm trying to share with you, Mark, I think we're something on the same page here. Firstborn, dependent upon its context, will give us the way that the, how the word could be understood. Would you agree? Say it again. Firstborn, depending upon its context, will give us an understanding of how we can understand what the word firstborn means. Context matters in every situation. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're on this. We're doing good, buddy. We're doing good. So let's go back a few verses now. Okay. But I don't, but I don't think the context in, in, okay. in, in Colossians let, but here's the, This is the thrust. Is this is the thrust of your argument as a Jehovah Witness. This is the whole thrust of why the Watchtower altered and changed verse 16 and 17 is because of these words right here. Because of Jesus being called the firstborn of all creation. You believe when you read these verses, when it says this here, you're thinking this is implying that this means Jesus was the first to be created. Yes? Correct. Okay. Let's read the Bible for the way it's supposed to be, not with the <laughs> watchtower adding the word other. Okay. Because the watchtower even openly admits they've added the word there that's not supposed but, but, to be but, but, there. Can, can I say something about the other before you Kel, get into Kel, it? Kelly, you're being a prophet right now, by the way. Hey, hey, how Jacob, if you keep doing that, I'm going to remove you. Hey, hey Sue, so can I say something to you, uh, Kelly? Go ahead, Mark. Other. Um, we, we know that your Bibles use this word all the time. You get Luke. Uh, 13 2, I believe. You got Acts 5 13. I know you're looking at your stuff online right now. It's okay. No, 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 no. Okay. I'm not online at all. I've, I've read I'm all not... your literature, not all of it. I've read a lot of these statements that you're reading. This is memory. This, is, actually this right, is memory. It's actually right in front of that study note that goes on reading these things. I get it. This is exactly no, this what is it memory. says. It this literally says all this right here that you're going to be going to. I get all that. I get all that. I get all that. My point that I'm trying to say is. When we're looking at Colossians, Correct. what I'm trying to get to is, okay, what does the text say? Okay. okay. We're, we've already both agreed, Mark, that the word firstborn does not automatically have a meaning that we want it to say. It has the qualifier dependent upon its context. You agreed with me on this, but right? I also believe that there's 132 times in which that's, it means. That's, that's nice. I'm just saying, okay, look, ahead, we've ahead, looked at 118. We've looked at other verses that have the word firstborn, and it has a meaning dependent upon its context. We want to go with what the context says, yes? Let's go. Let's go. Yes, sir. Okay. So when you read it for what it says okay. in the Greek, a literal, I'll even just use the kingdom in a linear here. So there's no bias. So you can't call me a Trinitarian. We're using the kingdom in a linear. Okay. okay. This is what the kingdom in a linear says, yeah, which the watchtower actually things, says. Right? In the preface of page five, that if you want to know the accuracy of any Bible translation, you are to go with the kingdom in a linear translation. That's their own words. That's what they say. I'm aware. So it says here in verse 16, because in him, it was created the all things in the heavens and upon the earth, the things visible and the things invisible, whether thrones or lordships or governments or authorities. The mm -hmm. all things through him and into him, it has been created. He is before all things, and the all things in him, it has stood together. So the reason I'm going to say in this, the qualifier, 
as you like to say, firstborn. The reason why he is called the firstborn is not because he's the first to be created. What, on not what basis? He's the first to be on what basis? Lineage. On what it's basis? Because of his rank of all creation. Why? Because he created all things. But that doesn't Everything answer Everything that came into existence is because of him. And therefore, that's why he's given this title, firstborn, because he's the very one who created everything, not a part of it. That's the but, qualifier. But, but, but Kelly, you know, like I know, that when it says he's the firstborn from the dead, it was not talking about a category like Lazarus. You know this. I it just said that a little while ago. We already went through that. I qualified right, right. it because talking about his glorification. It's called context. But what I'm saying is it calls him. We got many other scriptures in, in Revelations, in, uh, in, in, in 1 Corinthians. We got all these, t these situations where it's not, there is it's taught, it's saying that he's the firstborn. Unless you're willing to say that it doesn't mean a literal firstborn from the dead and use this 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 idea that is talking about things like Lazarus which Lazarus died again those and then he goes on in first Corinthians and says and those that are resurrected in this class of resurrection will be done in certain orders you, you, I think you, you, these, are, these are two different classes of well, resurrections Mark the thing but is you, which is great the Mark the thing that is great talking with you is you're actually been saying the thing that I've been saying you just don't realize it that's the interesting thing that? Okay, and me. the qualifier that you like, I'm going to start using that word for now. And I think it's my new word <laughs> is <laughs> I like that word. Good. I like it. It's how you talk. You know, so we all have a unique way of we talk. I like right, it. I like right, it. Right, right, I like right. it. Respect, respect. Okay. Okay. So let's, let's when we're looking at 16, okay. sorry, um, 18, the qualifier okay. that we agree is when he's told the firstborn has yes. nothing to do with him being created, has nothing to do with him being a lineage and a family. It has to do with him being resurrected from the dead, talking about his glorification, talking about being the first one that would be resurrected, glorified. We would agree on that. That's why he's called the firstborn there. So when we're looking at verse 15, it's a different context here. But I believe, as I said, the qualifier or the flesh, if you will, uh, is talking about verse 16 and 17. Because even the watchtower admits this, Mark. The watchtower admits that if the word other is not there, this would give the impression that Jesus is actually the creator, not created. So that's why this is so important to get. But, First but they do is not that for the, there's, ahead, there's, there's, a, there's a Greek word. Okay. Maybe in your studies of over the years, you say you've been a witness. I said for, you said for 30 years, right? Yes, yes. Okay, fair enough. How old are you? I'm, I'm 52. I'm 53. Whoa, you're an old man. Holy moly. All right. You're old, you're old man. <laughs> I'm 52, man. Come on. All right. We are, we are I'm getting a, I'm we're a, dinosaurs. I'm a little older. I'm a little older. We're I'm dinosaurs. Older. We're dinosaurs. I know. <laughs> we're living a different age. So here's the thing. All right. Fair enough. In my studies, Mark, okay. I have done some research on this. Maybe you have too. If Paul was wanting to teach, mm -hmm. in fact, that Jesus was the first to be created, you know what word? Would teach that from the Greek? Have you ever studied this before? Uh, yeah, I know what you're getting at. Oh, it's slipping my mind. I know exactly what you're talking about. But go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. It's well, I'll, I'll refresh ahead. your memory. Go ahead. Go ahead. The word is protocoteus. Yes. Pro, pro, now, uh, protocos. No, well, no, no, no. Yes, yes. That's the word there. No, prototokos, that's the, that's the word for firstborn. Yes. Prototox, yes. prototox however you want to pronounce it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yes. the word for first created is a different Greek word. It's protokoteus. It's a different word. And the reason why I want to emphasize that with you is that was a word that was also known during that century when Paul would have been writing what he would have been known in the language of the Greek. The reason why that's important, if Paul wanted to stress and teach, inspired by the Holy Spirit, motivated and moved, the Greek word that would have been appropriate to teach of him being created mm. would have been the word protokoteus. But because prototokos, word firstborn, dependent upon its qualifier and its context, can have various meanings. Keyword. It never means, 
It mm -hmm. never means first to be created explicitly. That is not what I'm true. trying to share with not, you. Not true. Because we can go I'm to giving Genesis. you what the language no, is. No, no, I've no. studied this, Mark. We can go to Genesis chapter 6, verse 7. You know what that says? It doesn't say the word prototokia is what we're talking no, about because, in Colossians we're, 1. We're, we're in Hebrews because you're saying that these are not equivalent words. They are. In Genesis 6, 7, it says God said that he's going to destroy man whom he has created. And we know in verse 6, 7 that all of that was procreation. That was all procreation. Man who had grown upon the earth, that was procreation. And he referred to that as that he had created so you're saying that i get what you're saying so, that so it, to it, be it can clear mean, Mark, it does mean direct creation creation so Mark, but it I don't, does I'm, Go ahead. right so you're you're kind of you're kind of doing willard from footloose uh with two left feet right now you might get my joke actually i don't know if you will or not but anyway um i know what this is. is did you actually get my joke did you know footloose i i, I get it i get it dude we got to hang out with these days. You got a sense of humor like me. I like you. I like you. I do. I do. I get, I get, I get what your so, point is. Yeah, I got you. So here, Genesis 2 7. Why is this Willard? Because six, it's seven. not, six, it's seven. not, yeah, it's not on the context of what we're talking about here. This here says, I will blot out man whom I've created from the face of the land. This is not talking about firstborn. Firstborn has to do with first to being created. So this is a completely, but all those were completely, I don't even know where you'd even apply this would even have any application to Colossians well, one. That's they, why, I, because they were all begotten. But he yet and still he uses the word the men I have people I have created. Right, even but it wouldn't have to do begotten. it wouldn't have to do with first to be created. That's my whole point. So back in Colossians one. Well, Again, I mean, no, it, it doesn't have nothing to do with the that's first. A completely, first. Mark, I want to be respectful. That's a completely different context. There's, there's not mm -hmm. it's apples and oranges. It's literally well, apples and oranges. I disagree. If you had, if you had the word firstborn there, you'd no, be good. No, I, I, I don't mean that in terms of firstborn. I just mean in terms of begotten. That, yeah, that, but still, again, still a different context. So let's get back to Colossians. Let's I, let's let's no. wrap it up here. I, I'm getting tired. I want to wrap it up with you guys. This has been really good. I got you. I got you. I, got you. I know you don't agree with me, Mark, and I know you don't agree, Jacob. Okay. Fair enough. You guys got the kahunas to come up here and talk. Respect, okay? Um, I'll, 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 give, I'll give you both one Hello? comment. Try to keep it one or two minutes to wrap up your thoughts for both of you. And then I'll wrap up my thoughts one or two minutes, and then we'll call it a night. And maybe what we could do is plan something like this down the road in advance when I haven't been would, going already for three hours before you guys come on. I would like to talk about the deity of Christ. Sounds good. In the All right. So, Jacob, why don't we let you go first for a minute or two? Give your final thoughts from whatever we've been talking about. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, Kelly. I, I, I didn't mean to disrespect you. Um, that I just I just felt like um, uh, it, Some, it was a good conversation. Sometimes we have people having a, a moment of, back and forth. Both, it's, just, it's just as good to let them go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, no, I definitely understand. We do have different readings of the Bible, everyone, all three of us, even if it, we're all LDS or all Jehovah's Witness, we probably still have different um, contexts, different understandings of, of certain scriptures, um, as mentioned before. Uh, but yeah, and um, I just want to bring out, if you can pull up uh, Hebrews 12, 9, um, I just will, this will be my final thought, really, that, that scripture. Um Hebrews twelve nine. One sec. One sec. Let, me, let me get it. Hebrews one nine. Hebrews twelve nine. Twelve nine. Sorry, my bad. My bad. Hebrews twelve. All right. On the screen, I'll highlight it for you. Twelve nine. There you go. You're getting tired, my okay. friend. <laughs> I'm going on almost five hours now, Mark. Yeah, That's yeah. Good. We're getting it on exhausted person. Um. So yeah. So, uh, here's where it says, furthermore, we had earthly fathers to discipline us and respect them. Shall we not be much rather be subject to the father of our spirits and live? And um, here, it, I love this part verse because it, it explains very well uh, that um, there is the father uh, who is the creator, who I would say the creator of everything, um, you know, in a very, very uh, monotheistic fashion, I would say, because um out of him through or by him all things are made um, but through jesus christ everything was created 
that makes sense. I know that's kind of a hard thing to understand as as a Trinity Trinitarians, but um, it, it's it, to me that's just scripture. Um, but here here we can see that the Father of our spirits, you know, Jesus Jesus is a spirit. So, you know, Jesus has a spirit. We have to acknowledge that. Um, Jesus, you know, very separate person, and with separate person, uh, it, it has a separate spirit, um, and. The father, obviously, in this context, would be the father, uh, the father of all, right? What, what, who Jesus would have claimed to be the father. So this is this to me just kind of summarizes my point: um, the father of spirits, the father who created the spirits, um, the spirits that were um, created um, were, you know, existed before. Um, you know, pre pre existence. So they existed before the beginning in um, in, in Genesis, right? Where where it says that. Um, but we all came on this earth, um, and we still have spirits. Um, and our Father is is the the Father of our spirits is the Creator of our spirits, um, and that includes Jesus Christ, um, who uh, this first you know, just kind of throws it out to me because it doesn't, it doesn't say Christ, the father or the, the father of our spirits to be Christ. It's a, it specifically says the father. And even as a Trinitarian that you have to say like, okay, well, it, as a, as a three being, um, you know, or as a three person being like the role of the father would be to uh, create the spirits. And, and if Jesus has a spirit, then he would be the father um, in a very literal sense. So that's all I have to say about that. I know that you probably have a different interpretation of the scripture, but that's just how I understand it. And um, I'll just leave off with that. All right, Mark. Appreciate it. Thank you, Sharon. Jacob, Mark, give you a minute or two or three uh, to share your final thoughts from our discussion. And I'd like to have you come back up another day as well. Absolutely. And, I, you know, I feel like that, uh, you know, I really appreciate you, you know, your platform. I get what, where you're coming from understand your stance and your position. Unfortunately, I, I think you're incorrect uh, about many things. And I would love to uh, further this conversation. Um, in terms of uh, J uh, uh, John 1-1, uh, referring to Jesus, I, I just emphatically disagree with uh, him being the with God through all eternity. I think Job tells us that that's not the case. Job uh, 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 38, four through six says that the angels was there when the earth and, and, and was created. I know a lot of Trinitarians say, well, you know, he was there. Um, and so before he created all physical things, then he was beyond time. I think Job 38 tells us that no, the angels was there. So I, I think that there's a point to be made there. I also want to point out that um, in terms of Psalms, I mean, not Psalms, but Colossians, uh, when it says that Jesus is the only, uh, he's the firstborn overall creation, I think it literally means that. Um, why? Because we're talking about creation. We're talking about the things that are in heaven and on earth. And it says he's the firstborn of creation. I don't think that includes him in the things through Jesus. I think for, uh, 1 Corinthians 8, 6 points that out. I think uh, Revelations 3, 14 points that out. I think that we have a lot of things that we can look at to say that's not the case. Do I respect your position? Absolutely. Do I think that it's accurate in relationship to the Bible? No, I don't. And I would look forward to uh, for, uh, forwarding our conversation in this way. And, you know, uh, Kelly, I, don't, I really don't know because I've looked at your website uh, and I've sent um, emails and apparently you haven't gotten them. I've so, gotten them. Uh, Oh, you have? No, I haven't. No, I haven't. No, I haven't. Oh, right, right. That's what I'm saying. So maybe we can exchange number. Are you are you in Canada or are you in U U.S.? I'm currently in Canada. Yeah, where you, you are at? You in Canada? I'm where in you the at? U.S. I'm in where the you U.S. At? U.S. I know where. Uh, Missouri. Oh wow, you're way over there. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. My dad was born in Springfield. How about that? Springfield, Missouri. No, that's exactly right. Where you at? Yeah. Good no, old, exactly good old Missouri. Good old Missouri. <laughs> Depending on how you want to pronounce it. Old school. Yeah, I'm originally so, from California. 
So, but so uh, is, I, is, is there is there a way on this uh, on this connection for me to? Because I don't care. I, I got a phone that I use for these types um, of things. If I was to give you my number, would you be able to keep it? Because I wouldn't care if yeah. You, uh, so anyone else. when we when I finish the stream, okay, don't leave. Stay on the stream. Okay, we'll talk after privately, and I'll get your okay. email. How's so that? Just just stay put. Yeah, don't don't leave. Don't do anything. You just stay there. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Do you want to share anything else before I respond to you guys? No, sir. Okay. Well, I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right. So you both have shared some stuff tonight. Thank you both, Jacob. Um, no, I know we have very differences and we can be passionate. Um, this is a spiritual war, gentlemen. All three of us would agree. We have three very different perspectives this evening. I think this is a rare thing, seeing a Jehovah's Witness, a Latter-day Saint, and someone like myself, who is a Trinitarian, discussing and talking about these things amongst each other. I think this is a rare thing. And I would love to set up another discussion in advance where all three of us could be there, sharing our different views, and have a topic planned in advance. And what we could also do is have a lot of time where we're able to share certain things and then we can have a little bit of a free flow as well. But that way it's much, you know, like keeping it fair. If you guys are interested in that, um, that's up to you guys. So, um, does it say 400 people are here right now? No way. Is that real? <laughs> what? That can't be real. I've never had that many people on my channel. Right. What are you guys all doing here? Do you guys not have live? That's what happens when you get Latter Day Saint and a and a Jehovah's Witness. Yeah. Wait a minute. Okay, I'm going another five often. hours for you guys. Holy you, 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 moly! You just, spoke, you just spoke on the reason. What the? Okay. Well, first off, let me say hi to. Okay, don't don't leave yet. Hello, yes. 418 people that I'm not used to seeing at one shot. Who shared a link? This is incredible. Like. I'm not like, you know, James White or David Wood or whatever. I mean, Mother it must Robert be Bowman. Jacob must have Jacob must have sent an email out to his friends out in Utah. Um, and now they're all here. I mean, this is crazy. This is crazy. Wow. Wow. Okay. Um oh, I, I wish. Yeah. I wish I had yeah. more friends in this place. <laughs> this is insane. This is crazy. So, well, what we've been doing for anyone listening right now. Jacob is a Latter-day Saint. Mark is here as a Jehovah Witness. I'm a Trinitarian, quote-unquote Christian. That's where, where I'm at. And we've been talking this evening about who is Jesus, about the issue of the firstborn of the Son, Colossians 1, John 1. We've looked at 1 Corinthians 8. We've looked at Genesis 1. We went through the word firstborn in Exodus 4, Psalm 89. Jeremiah 31. We've looked at a lot of scriptures. This is insane. Um, so just welcome here, guys. What I would like to set up for a future discussion with us, we'll definitely work on that. So um, now the topic that uh, you were wanting, you said a moment ago, Mark, you want to talk about the deity of Christ? Yes, absolutely. How about yourself, Jacob? What is a topic you think you'd like to talk about? Ooh, uh, that's a hard, that's a difficult one. We have we probably all have different differences. I kind of sided with Mark on this one, but uh, but DOD of Christ would probably be a, a wholly different conversation. But yeah, I, I love that. That's a really good one because my, my the church my church is called the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. So I would I, I would be remiss if I didn't. Well, his is called Jehovah's Christ. Witnesses. So what are you gonna do oh, with that? Sure. <laughs> 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 all right. Well, let me wrap up my thoughts here on our conversation here pertaining to what you guys said a moment ago. Um, so let's look at the scriptures here for a second. So I'll go with what you mentioned a moment ago, Jacob, you went to Hebrews 12, nine for some reason. And you know, that's your, your thoughts. What I'd say, this doesn't in any way go against what a Trinitarian would believe. Um, what the author of Hebrews is talking about here, about it's discipline that you endure God deals with you as sons. He's talking about discipline. Verse 10 says they discipline us for a short time, talking about our earthly fathers. 
So this is talking about our Heavenly Father, which I would use similar terminology there, even though we have very different distinctive beliefs, um, that the Father is the one who disciplines us. But this in no way would teach against the Trinity. Uh, this would not in any way teach anything what has been shared this evening. But I do appreciate what you were sharing. Now, in regards to what you were sharing, uh, Mark, if I remember correctly, you went to Job 38 briefly. And I think this is normally the verse that's normally cited is Job 38, verse 7, when it says, The morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Now, this is not stating that this took place before creation. This is talking about place after creation. So this would not be a good verse to use in regards to before creation. However, I would believe that during, at some point, there could have been definitely angels involved. But when we're looking at the scriptures, and we're seeing that it was Jesus as we were looking earlier in John 1, 3, John 1, 3 states that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. And verse 3 was the main thrust of our evening for our discussion. And this is really what I want to leave with both of you with. I mean, again, what does the text say? It says all things. All things have come into existence, right? All things. So, this is what we see. Nothing came into existence or being without him, meaning Jesus. Um, when we were talking here about Colossians chapter 1, this was the one of the main verses that was being brought up, is what does these verses teach? What does verses 15 through 17 teach? This is the thrust of a lot of this conversation this evening as well. Jesus is the image of the invisible God. He's not a copy. He's not a shadow. He is the image. So to see the Father... To see Jesus is to see the Father, what Jesus said in John 14, 9. The firstborn we've looked at, though there's definitely disagreements. Firstborn does not mean first to be created. doesn't mean always first to be in lineage. It's qualified, as my friend Mark likes to say, as context. And I would always agree with that. Even the Watchtower has openly stated that all other things here, if the word other is not there, it would give the indication that Jesus is, in fact, the creator not created. And as the kingdom and the linear states, there is no word other there at all. So when we read what the text actually says, it gives a very different indication context of the qualifier of why Jesus actually is the creator of all things. All right. Well, I don't know why we had that burst of people coming in here. And my flesh says, I want to go now two more hours because we have so many people in here, but I'm getting tired. And I am hungry, but I really appreciate you both coming up, though we completely disagree wholeheartedly because you as Larry Saint believe in the prophet Joseph Smith, that he was the restored prophet that brought in many different teachings. Russell is the guy who helped kickstart the international Bible students now known as the Jehovah Witnesses. And myself, I don't have any quote unquote that type of affiliation other than simply a born again Christian. So I think this is great. And I'm going to get your contact information. I have yours, Jacob, already. Uh, I'll get your contact information in just a minute there um, after the stream is done when I do my final trailer. Uh, it's a few minutes. I'll give you a heads up there, Mark. But when we're done, we'll talk more and we'll get the personal information. Is that good with you? Sounds good. All right.